Well, it's the Royal Circus, which shows no sign of slowing down. Prince Harry launching a fresh broadside today against the British royal family, sitting down for two primetime interviews in both the UK and US to promote his book, Spare Me. Oh, I'm sorry, it's just called Spare. My mistake. Of course, whether accidental or on purpose, the book was released early in Spain, and since then there's been an avalanche of coverage. Today's interviews were no different. Harry, who has claimed to be seeking a new private life in California, how's that working out for you, was happy to share plenty of new details about his deteriorating relationship with his father and brother, plus continue his crusade against the, what he called, villainous and destructive British press. Joining me now live from the UK is British writer and broadcaster Esther Kraku. Esther, welcome so much to the program. Thank you for joining us. Let's start with Harry's family. He told Anderson Cooper that he is using these interviews to, quote, speak my truth and get through to the royal family. Do you think this is working and why didn't he just send a telegram? <laughs> Well, according to him, he already has tried all options. So obviously the natural progression is to completely incinerate your relationship with your family. <laughs> um, but it's clear what he's trying to... <laughs> <laughs> it's clear what he's trying to do here. He, he, he is effectively trying to bully the royal family into having some sort of reaction, um, which just kind of shows his state of mind because it takes a certain level of disconnection with reality to actually think that will work. Um, there were so many moments in the interview, particularly the Tom Bradby interview, that were quite telling of, you know, the state of mind that Prince Harry is in from, you know, how he views what he is doing to what he thinks is actually going to happen. He made it very clear throughout many points in the interview that he didn't actually think that his his, his uh, media expose of, of his experience in the royal family is actually doing any harm. He did. He kept saying he didn't mean to harm his his, his family, even though that's exactly what he's doing. Um, he's trying to, in a very poor way, separate the family from an institution. But I, I, that just goes to show how disconnected he is from the from 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 reality, because you really can't disconnect the two. And his complaints about the the British tabloids and the British media is very interesting, because he's using particularly that engine and that vehicle to speak. His his truth and that's actually backfiring on him because public perception of him is actually getting worse and worse there is such a thing as too much information and you know when you give the public your side of the story effectively when you know perfectly well that the royal family aren't going to come out with such a detailed expose of their side of the story you effectively give people a lot of opportunities to pick holes in your stories but also judge you quite harshly because they're only getting that side of the truth and because the royal family have maintained a dignified silence all we can go on is is prince harry's kind of really clumsy and scandalous um, statements. And I don't think that's doing him any favors. And he's and certainly ruining his relationship with his family. Well, he's not only you know, ruining his relationship with his family, but he's throwing some pretty heavy duty claims out there. Let's have a little clip, uh, look at this clip here about his claims uh, on ITV about racism and the royal family. Have a look at this. In the Oprah interview, you accuse members of your family of racism. You don't even, we don't. well, of the British press said that. Right. I, did did Meghan ever mention that they were they're racist? She said there were troubling comments about yeah, there, there was skin concern color. about his skin color. Right? Wouldn't you describe that as essentially racist? I wouldn't, not having lived within that family. Right. So you again, don't going mean, going back to yeah. the difference between what yeah. my understanding is because okay. of my own experience, the difference between racism and unconscious bias, the two things are different. Okay, I'm totally confused here, and maybe you can help unpick this because it seems like it's a direct contradiction to what Harry told Oprah last year about the racism in the royal family. What's this backtrack all about? Yeah, I, th again, this goes to show the disconnect between, you know, Harry's reality and the actual reality of, of, of things. You know, to, from the Oprah interview that we all watched, you know, he's saying it's the British media and the British tabloids. Again, we all watched it. You can't, you know, treat the public like we're stupid and, and gaslight us in this way. The, the comments that him and Meghan made in that interview clearly suggested that the royal family are indeed racist because, again, they didn't name, they refused to name a specific person. They were happy to go along with this idea that someone in the royal family said it and they wouldn't 
name the person therefore it, it is a racist institution you know by by default and they, they let this idea proliferate for two years because if he's saying that he didn't say the royal family were racist but you knew that the what you said would be able to was clearly spun that way why didn't you say something against it in the two years that this interview has been out again he's very disconnected from reality you know he's backtracking because he knows that he just keeps piling on the damage to the royal family and by extension any hope that he can re reconcile with them and again he's just making himself look ridiculous um clearly we're watching and i speak say this from a very personal perspective we're watching a very troubled man we're watching a very emotional man we're watching a man who probably spends too much time with hollywood therapists um because a lot of what he's doing right now is counterproductive he seems like an angry belligerent child and i don't see how he thinks there's any coming back from this yeah it, it just doesn't make any sense and in in his in his sort of view of things he's done everything possible and this is the last straw well if the last straw is to effectively give up and blow up any sort of relationship you have with your family then you're really not in the right here well, I, look i think you're right i think your point about the arrest and development about the man child here is absolutely correct thank you so much and that's yeah. all the time we have for tonight but i loved your insights here